The term Persian Empire refers to a succession of ruling dynasties throughout Persia's historical timeline. The heart of these regimes predominantly resided within what is now recognized as Iran. This presentation will delve into the inaugural Persian Empire, widely regarded as the most renowned among them. When the name Persia is mentioned, our minds often turn to the Greco-Persian Wars that transpired some 2,500 years ago. Tales of Marathon and the legendary stand of the 300 Spartans stem from these historic conflicts. The Achaemenid Empire, commonly referred to as Ancient Persia, exerted dominion over the territories of modern-day Iran and extended its reach across the Levant to the Mediterranean Sea. It conquered illustrious ancient civilizations such as Babylonia and Egypt, asserting control over Anatolia and even reaching the shores of Europe, encompassing Thrace and northern Greece at its zenith. Despite its status as the most formidable empire of its era, the question remains, what factors precipitated the collapse of this global powerhouse? Established circa 550 BC by Cyrus the Great, the initial Persian Empire burgeoned into one of the most expansive realms in recorded history. Its domain sprawled from the Balkan Peninsula in Europe to the Indus Valley in India, encompassing a vast expanse of territory. Referred to as the Achaemenid Empire in historical accounts, this Iron Age dynasty served as a nexus of global cultural, religious, scientific, artistic, and technological exchange for over two centuries before succumbing to the invading forces of Alexander the Great. The origins of the Persian Empire trace back to a coalition of semi-nomadic tribes inhabiting the Iranian plateau, these groups subsisted primarily through animal husbandry, raising sheep, goats, and cattle as their main livelihood. Cyrus the Great emerged as the prominent figurehead of one of these tribes, eventually embarking on a campaign to conquer neighboring kingdoms and tribes. Among his notable conquests were the territories of Media, Lydia, and Babylon, along with various others, uniting them under a single rule. Under the leadership of Cyrus the Great, the inaugural Persian Empire swiftly ascended to the status of the world's premier superpower. Subsequently, Darius the Great, the fourth ruler of the Achaemenid Empire, presided over its zenith, overseeing the Persian Empire at its most expansive extent. Extending from the Caucasus and West Asia to the ancient region of Macedonia in the Balkans, encompassing territories along the Black Sea, through Central Asia and reaching into Africa, incorporating swaths of Libya and Egypt. Darius achieved unity within the empire by implementing standardized currency weights and measures. Despite the diverse cultures within the empire, Aramaic served as the official language. Notable infrastructural developments included the construction of roads and monuments. Following Darius's reign, his son Xerxes ruled until 465 BC. Xerxes, characterized by his cruelty yet perceived weakness, faced defeat at the hands of the Greeks. His reign marked the onset of decline for the Persian Empire, which persisted for over a century but gradually weakened over time. Internal strife and instability plagued the empire. Fueled by conspiracies, assassinations, and widespread revolts arising from grievances, such as heavy taxation and other causes. As often observed in historical contexts, internal turmoil initiated the downfall of empires. When an empire maintained stability, order, and equilibrium within its borders, its external dominance was formidable. At its zenith, the Persian Empire surpassed any previous empire known to humanity, spanning an estimated area of 5.5 million square kilometers and encompassing diverse peoples of varying origins and faiths. Governing such a vast and diverse realm required meticulous care. A colossal empire wields immense power, yet it also risks collapse under the weight of its own magnitude. The Persians engineered a sophisticated system renowned for its effective centralized bureaucratic governance. This system partitioned the empire into numerous regions known as satrapies, each governed by a satrap, with every satrap answering directly to the king of kings. 
This prestigious title was predominantly used by monarchs and rulers in the Middle Eastern region. During its formative years, the administration prioritized infrastructure projects, including the establishment of road networks and a postal system, alongside the development of civil services and a formidable professional army. The empire's achievements served as a model for subsequent empires, inspiring the implementation of similar systems. However, the social fabric began to unravel in the absence of a strong central leader, leading to a breakdown in the empire's structure. The emperor served as the linchpin of the empire, and any perception of weakness could invite the ambitions of others vying for power. Initially, discontent simmered among the lower classes, leading to organized riots and various acts of revolt against the ruling elite. As kings grew increasingly greedy, they began to pilfer from the empire's wealth rather than distributing it among the populace. Weak leadership precipitated numerous provincial revolts, including one in Egypt. The ancient civilization of the Nile had deep-seated antipathy towards Persian rule, exacerbated by the province's considerable wealth. This dissatisfaction resonated profoundly when the people of Egypt opted not to resist, but rather welcomed Alexander the Great as a liberator upon his invasion of Persia. Furthermore, the provincial leaders, known as satraps, gradually asserted greater independence over their respective territories, often wielding more power than the central ruler of the empire. They came to be perceived more as local monarchs than loyal subjects to the empire's king. Conflicts among these satraps escalated, with some even pursuing their own foreign policies and engaging in wars against each other. This internal strife exacerbated Persia's challenges, as the disunity within this colossal structure fueled revolts, while disloyal satraps contributed significantly to the empire's economic woes. Over time, the Persian government undoubtedly weakened, grappling with the absence of a strong leader capable of mobilizing armies and securing wealth for the empire. The governance gradually devolved into a dysfunctional dictatorship, hampering the effective administration of the realm. This decline had detrimental effects on the Persian army, as the lack of a firm foundation or leadership structure led to internal disarray and diminished discipline among the troops. The substantial expenses incurred in defending Persia's vast territories depleted the empire's coffers, necessitating heavier taxation imposed on its subjects. These taxes became increasingly burdensome and oppressive, exacerbating economic hardships and fostering widespread discontent. This discontent, in turn, fueled revolts against Persian rule, prompting the authorities to respond with further repression and even heavier taxation. This vicious cycle of economic depression, revolts, repression, and increased taxation perpetuated a downward spiral within the empire. Additionally, Persian kings began hoarding gold and silver rather than circulating it within the economy. This hoarding exacerbated the economic turmoil, further weakening the king's positions. This weakness, in turn, fueled the cycle of revolts, empowered satraps, and perpetuated the empire's downward spiral. As crop production dwindled, prompting an exodus of commoners and stifling trade, Persia's ability to drive scientific advancements faltered. Consequently, the empire regressed in complexity. In its twilight years, this decline in technological progress severely impacted weapon production and overall safety, hastening the empire's demise. This decline in scientific and technological advancements proved to be a major contributing factor to Persia's fall. Macedonia rose to prominence as a formidable Greek power under the reign of Philip II. However, his assassination by his own bodyguard led to the ascension of his son Alexander, who had been designated as the heir. Alexander was proclaimed king by the Macedonian nobility and army. Motivated by a desire for revenge against past Persian incursions on Greek lands, the Macedonians rallied behind Alexander's leadership. In 334 BC, Alexander crossed the Hellespont into Asia, but the Persians initially underestimated the significance of his movement, failing to perceive it as a substantial threat. 
King Darius III of Persia, adopting an attitude of ignorance, did not fully comprehend the gravity of the situation. After his successful crossing into Asia, Alexander proceeded to defeat the Persian armies at Granicus in 334 BC, followed by another victory at Issus in 333 BC. Subsequently, he marched into Egypt, where he was received with open arms as a liberator. Many regarded Alexander as a divine figure, further enhancing his stature and influence. At this juncture, Darius offered Alexander half of his empire in exchange for peace. However, the young king, guided by his belief that Asia was a divine gift bestowed upon him by the gods, rejected Darius's offer. Following his significant triumph at Gogamela in 331 BC, Alexander pressed onward capturing Susa and Persepolis, both of which surrendered in early 330 BC. From Persepolis, Alexander journeyed northward, passing through Pasargade, where he visited the tomb of Cyrus the Great, paying homage to the founder of the Persian Empire. After being taken prisoner by Bessus, Darius III was subsequently murdered by his captor, Bessus, who then declared himself Darius's successor under the name Artaxerxes V. However, Bessus's reign was short-lived as he was eventually apprehended and brought to trial in a Persian court, where he was found guilty and executed. In 330 BC, Alexander the Great emerged victorious over King Darius III and the Persian army. Following his defeat, Darius was assassinated by one of his own followers. Despite this, Alexander maintained the Persian system of government until his own demise in 323 BC. The defeat of Darius signaled the conclusion of the Achaemenid dynasty and the Persian Empire. Remarkably, Alexander chose to preserve much of the original Achaemenid administrative framework. Consequently, some scholars have dubbed him as the last of the Achaemenid rulers, recognizing his continuation of their governance structure. Upon Alexander the Great's death in 323 BC, his vast empire was divided among his generals, marking the beginning of the Hellenistic period.